Hey guys, this is the Captain Hook uh, Chronicles and today it's a great day because we are with a champ. Caleb Truax is with us. Caleb, so nice to uh, to meet you again. To meet you finally. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. So, for all the people who click on the video, I apologize. Yes, I apologize for my my big, my fat, and my strong French accent. I will try to do my best and uh, meet me halfway. I'm pretty sure the interview will be good. Uh, Caleb, uh, it's uh, really great uh, to have you because for um, I think you are uh, that, that kind of fighter that we can uh, really relate to. You you stay true to yourself, stay true to your people, and uh, from uh, where you where you from and. Uh, I know in my subscribers, a lot of people relate uh, uh, to you. And uh, um, before uh, asking you about uh, your career, uh, tell me, growing up in Minnesota, being a boxing fan in Minnesota, uh, who were the, the, the champion you, you look at to, uh, to be motivated to, to go to the gym? Uh, Minnesota has a rich boxing history Uh, especially back in like the early 1920s, like Tommy Gibbons and the Gibbs brothers. And, and uh, there was a lot of guys like early in like the 1920s, 30s, stuff like that. But for a while there was kind of like a dead period. But right before I turned pro, when, when I was an amateur, there was Matt Vanda who fought up in Canada a few times. I think he fought uh, Sebastian Demers up in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um Uh, uh, Anthony Bonsante, who was on the Contender show, the first season of the Contender. Yes, you're right. Uh, it was a really big. So uh, those guys were the guys that I really looked up to, and uh, thankfully I got to spar with them a lot. And Minnesota is a really small boxing community, so I know them really well. Matt Van is a really good friend of mine. We we trained at the same gym uh, for years, even though we we fought each other um, in 2013. But prior to that, we had trained. Uh, at the same gym under the same guy, Ron Lake, my manager and his coach. And uh, so those guys, Vanda and Monsanto, the guys I really looked up to as I was coming up. Okay. And speaking of coming up in the boxing pro world, uh, uh, a lot of my subscribers are people who are still going, for obviously not now, but still going in high school, still going uh, to college, still going to university and box as amateur or even as a pro. And can you re remind uh, us uh, what was your decision to, uh, to, fight, to fight as a pro? Uh, yeah, so when I was, uh, when I was a, a, an amateur, actually, well, let me, re let me uh, start over. Uh, I started late in boxing. I didn't start until I was 19 years old. And uh, I never really knew that boxing was available to a kid in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always a fan of it you know, watching it on TV and stuff like that, but I never knew I, there was gyms available to me to go train at. So I started late. I started talking about 19 years old uh, when I was already at the University of Minnesota. I see you put the picture up there. And uh, uh, I was in college. I was an amateur boxer. And when I was done with college, I, I never really wanted to be a pro boxer. I thought I was going to get a job, uh, you know, go about life that way. Uh, but at the same time, I didn't want to have any regrets and I didn't uh, want to look down the road and say, hey, what if what if I would have pursued a professional career? So uh, ultimately, I ended up uh, choosing to, to turn pro in 2007 and right after I graduated from college. And thankfully, I did, because uh, 13 years later, uh, here I am. My, my pro debut was just uh, the anniversary was just a couple of days ago. Uh, April April 6th, uh, 2007. So it's been 13 years that I've, I've been a pro, which is, uh, it's been a wild ride. And I never would have imagined that I'd been a pro for, for 13 years coming from a guy that never even really wanted to be a pro. <laughs> yeah. And I put uh, the, the logo of your university because uh, people have to, uh, to know that you have a degree in social science from the Minnesota University. Yeah, yeah, I studied there for my first year in college. I went to Virginia, but I came back home to uh, to the University of Minnesota and, and finished up there and graduated in 2006 with a degree in sociology and political science and African American study. Yeah, and you, uh, that's great. You, you sometimes you put uh, the color of your university on your 
on your trunk uh, during your fight and um, and we can see the M from Minnesota sometimes uh, on you. Um, uh, speaking not sometimes, not sometimes, always, always, man. I always got the maroon and gold uh, trunks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, speaking, uh, be a guy that stay true to his people. Can you tell me more about the guy in your corner? Because you you uh, keep the same team from the beginning. And can you tell me more about them? Yeah, yeah, those are all my guys. And, and I think it's pretty rare in boxing that yes. a fighter keeps uh, the same team his whole career. You know, a lot of times, especially after a loss, uh, you know, there's a lot of blame being passed around and, and switching coaches and switching this and that. But Uh, those guys have my best interests at heart, and it's my my trainer Tom Halstead, my cut man Jim Marine, my manager Ron Lake, and my promoter Tony Gregoppo. We've been together since day one, and, and I'm going to be with them for the rest of my career. And you know, they're they're lifelong friends, and and just uh, uh, like you said, man, I, I want to stay true to them, and they stay true to me, and and we just make a great team. Yes, maybe for the anecdote, a long time ago, I heard that. Andy Reese came to uh, train with Tom for a few days or few weeks. Is it true? No, no, he never came no. to train with Tom. Tom's had a few guys that have came uh, uh, from one guy from Las Vegas, uh, Lydell Rhodes. He, he worked out with Tom for a little while and had a, a fight or two with Tom. And uh, when he moved back to Las Vegas, he, uh, he, he switched trainers. But, uh, you know, Tom, he, he, he does this because uh, he loves it you know he, he still has a full-time job and uh works in construction and, and uh a laborer but uh if, if he was in, i tell everybody if, if he lived in las vegas he'd be one of the best trainers in the world or be recognized as one of the best trainers in the world because i think he is yeah yeah <clears throat> and he established a name uh also we're working with you um so as soon you become a pro fighter Uh, you you develop a career uh, um, around Minnesota. You you fight a lot all, all around Wisconsin, Dakota. But I suppose it must be hard to establish a name when you don't fight in the big market like LA, Vegas, or New York. Uh, it was tough for you. No, I don't think so, man. I I like the way that uh, my career unfolded that way because. You know, I was able to build a really good fan base. And, you know, most of the people that come to my fight are friends or family or people that have been to pretty much every fight in my career. So I've built a really good fan base and, and really connected with the people that are here in my home state. And I wouldn't have had it any other way because, uh, you know, I, I can I can fill up an arena here anytime I want, just basically off of the off of the. Uh, Uh, relationships I've built, you know, over the 13 years that I've been a pro. And it's obviously, it's nice to fight in the big markets. I fought in Las Vegas. I fought in England. I fought in Atlantic City. I fought in California. But um, my goal originally was always to bring big fights back to Minnesota just to reward my my fans and my, my friends and my family for always supporting me. So, yeah. Um, I've been lucky to bring a couple fights back to the Minneapolis Armory. Yeah, that, that was really big. And I fought in the Target Center where the Minnesota Timberwolves basketball team plays basketball. And so I, I always wanted to uh, bring everything back to, to my home state. Yeah, last year you fooled uh, the Armory in Minneapolis, I suppose. But the place looks so good on screen. That's amazing. I can't wait to visit the Armory because on, on TV, that looks really, really beautiful. Yeah, I think it's the best new venue in boxing, and and uh, uh, you know it holds. I think when I fought Peter Quillen the first time, uh, it was last April, actually probably yeah, like last April this week, and uh, we had I think forty five hundred people in there, and it holds like five thousand uh, if you don't open up the top level, and it was just a, basically a sold out crowd and just a rocking atmosphere right downtown in Minneapolis. So it's a, it a fantastic venue for boxing. And like you said, it shows really well on TV. Yeah, they yeah. got all the lights and all the uh, crazy colors. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, the wall, yes, like yes. A, yes. Oh, yeah, of course. We will speak about Quilling later in the interview. Uh, but uh, I think people for, uh, forgot that at your, I think your 19th or 20th fight, you fight 
a big, big name. People forgot about that, but you fight Jermaine Taylor. And it was, it was a, a, a fight that uh, maybe uh, changed a lot of uh, things for you. Uh, maybe the first time on Showtime, and you 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 give him a, a, a great fight, and you also also knock down Jermaine Taylor, uh, and Jermaine Taylor was uh, even if he it was a comeback for him at, at that time, he was an established name, he he, he was a, a great champ. Uh, do you recall the, your mood, and do you recall the, that period of time for you? Yeah, absolutely. It was my first really big fight. It was down in Biloxi, Mississippi, down south, and on Showtime, like you said. And I was 18 and zero, I believe, and and uh, you know he was the the former unified middleweight champion, and I was nervous as hell on going to that fight because he was a he was a fighter that I had always looked up to mm -hmm. as an amateur and even as a pro, and I never dreamed of fighting a guy like that that I that I followed uh, my whole career, but. Uh, I went in confident and and uh, I didn't get the job done, but like you said, I gave him a good fight and, oh, and yes. knocked him down. Even though I lost, I, I really, really took a lot of confidence from that fight because going into that fight, I was just a kid from Minnesota that didn't have a lot of amateur fights. Nobody really knew about. And going out of it is like, man, this kid knocked Jermaine Taylor down and gave him a good fight. And it really cemented the fact in my own mind that, that I could fight with the best in the world and I could hang with anybody that, that was out there. So it really gave me a lot of confidence going forward and it made me, even though I lost, it made me a better fighter. Yeah, yes, yes. And how good he was. Can you tell, tell us how good he was? Uh, his jab was good. What was uh, difficult to fight uh, with him? He, uh, he had, still to this day, he, he's had the best jab that I've ever faced. Uh, just long and hard and straight and And hard to pick up, and uh, that's what he was known for his whole career. You know, just a hard, fast, sharp jab, and uh, it was hard to get around. Um, yeah, he was just a, you know, he's a, like I said, he's a unified champion. He was a, <laughs> a guy I looked up to, and and uh, he had a hell of a jab. Yeah, but like you said, uh, after that, you uh, we can see you you gave so much confidence because you have uh, many victories by uh, by knockout or technical knockout. Uh, one after uh, uh, another, and uh, uh, three years after, you have another chance in a in a fight uh, more difficult, maybe more tactical fight against Danny Jacobs. And, and yeah, that was my first. Uh, that was my first opportunity in a world title, and yeah. I think that was 2014 or 2015, I believe. And uh, uh, yeah, in Chicago, like, we fought on on Spike TV, yeah. and uh, that was a fight too. He's probably to this day, he's probably the best fighter that I've that I've faced. Oh yeah, better than uh, Taylor. Uh, yeah, I think so. He he was he was in his prime. Taylor was uh, Taylor was you know on the comeback tour and towards the end of his career. I can't speak for overall, but uh, Jacobs is really quick and tough to hit, and and uh, just a, a good fighter. But um, the last one was uh, was tough uh, for you, but no frustration be uh, for you because we, we can see that even if the referee stopped the fight, you still um, you still um, aware you you uh, you still ready to go. Uh, do you have a, do you keep a frustration not going the distance against him? No, you know, at, at first I was really upset because yeah, you know, I'd never that. been stopped before and nobody wants to get uh, a TKO or a KO on the record. But at the same time, uh, the, afterwards, after the fight, the referee came into my locker room and said, hey, man, you know, I, uh, I know you don't want to get knocked out or uh, TKO on your record, but there's no way you were going to win that fight on the scorecards. You were down on the scorecards, and I just didn't want to risk you getting hit at all. Uh, and getting possibly hurt. Yeah. So that was good enough for me, man. I, I wasn't going to win that fight. There was like 30 seconds left. You know, I wasn't going to knock him out the last 30 seconds. So uh, I, I, I could have continued, but at the same time, the ref was looking out for my safety, so I can't be too mad yeah. about that. And I'm pretty pretty sure uh, you, uh, you take so much experience also from that fight. And finally, 
uh, the, the, the big moment and uh, the big opportunity came and it was for your first fight overseas and this is the, the fight in uh, London, England uh, against De Gale. We are in, uh, at the end of uh, the year 2017. It, it's uh, the last big fight of the year and you, you put one of maybe the biggest upset of, uh, of the year and uh, oh, how did you feel because on screen you f I have the feeling that you, you felt so good in the ring, uh, so confident. Oh, who was the fight for you? Uh, it was uh, it was the probably the best fight of my career. You know, yeah. everything just kind of came together and and everything was flowing and everything was coming off the way it was supposed to. And I was full of confidence and I was a little bit had a chip on my shoulder because he was really uh, uh, dismissing me leading up to the fight and and just worrying about the fights that were that he had to come that followed the fight that was in front of him. So I, I really had a chip on my shoulder to prove him wrong and prove everybody else wrong and. Everybody had written me off uh, after losing to Anthony Durrell, so yeah, I really wanted to come up and make a statement, and I was able to do so thankfully. And, and that fight changed my life and my career. Yeah, yeah. obviously, everybody in England uh, looked down on you at that time, and uh, but you, you take the opportunity, uh, and it, it was really great. So, tell me, it's something that everybody. Dream about when you're a boxing fan, but having the IBF belt on you, what's the feeling? Ah, oh, man, there's there's uh, not many better feelings in the world, you know. Like it's kind of cliche, but uh, when your kids are born, and <laughs> that's probably right now, that's probably the only thing that's uh, that's uh, in front of uh, winning that world title for me, man. Like when my kids were born, that's that comes number one, number two, but. Uh, Uh, winning that title, it's uh, you. Anybody that watched the fight or saw the replay uh, sees me just drop down to my knees and just like pure joy, man. Like I was so so happy and and just relieved. And it's a lifelong dream for any fighter that ever straps on a pair of gloves to win a world title. And I think I was only the fourth fighter ever to win a world title from Minnesota, so that was a pretty cool piece of history to take back to my state with me. So just a, a fantastic feeling. Oh yeah, fant fantastic feeling and uh, and uh, yes, uh, like a, a new, did you feel uh, like a newborn in terms of boxing that day? You know? Yeah, it definitely rejuvenated my career. Uh, you know, I I had like I said, I had the year before I had lost uh, Darrell by first round knockout and I went into that fight in a really bad mental state and I knew it wasn't me but everybody you know you're only as good as your your latest fight so uh, everybody written, had written me off and I and I won a fight uh prior to the, the Gale fight against a pretty tough guy uh but I was injured in the fight so it wasn't the best result and going into the Gale nobody believed I had a chance to to even compete with yeah. them and And uh, I proved everybody wrong, and that that made me feel even more. Uh, I guess I, I appreciated that feeling even more than winning a title. Just like proving everybody wrong, and everybody that all the naysayers and doubters that thought my career was over with and thought I was a journeyman and uh, I had no chance to compete with a world class fighter. Uh, when I had been in there with world class fighters and competed before. Uh, just proving everybody wrong, it just felt great to just go out there and, and, and prove them wrong and win my title. Yes, because in terms of competition, you don't have to uh, to be a shame if you compare with the girl. You know, when you have in, in your uh, resume uh, Taylor or, or uh, Jacobs, uh, you know, uh, you, the, the experience was uh, maybe on your side more than uh, we expected. <clears throat> so, yeah. so, Caleb, now you are in the in a new position. You're the champ, but you have just four months to prepare for the rematch. The rematch in Vegas at the Hard Rock Hotel of uh, of Las Vegas. I was there. I was in the building. I I saw you. But tell me, uh, 
in terms of preparation, when you're the champ and you defend your, your title, what's changed? Uh, you know, I felt really great going into the, the rematch. You know, I had a great, I had a great uh, camp to prepare and everything went perfectly. And uh, uh, going into the fight, I just, for whatever reason, I didn't perform at my top level, but uh, uh, I was confident that I had a great camp there. And sometimes it just uh, doesn't go your way in my, during the fight, I thought that I had done enough to win and uh, thought that I should have got the decision. I thought the Gale fought pretty dirty and didn't really do much but hold and, and hit while he's holding. But uh, at the same time, it's not up to me. It's up to the judges. And if I would have been at my best, I, I would have been able to beat him again. So I can't complain too much. Yeah, but to be honest, and don't be too uh, tough on yourself, to be honest, as a, a guy in the audience, and I was very close to the, the few guys who came to support the girl, <laughs> watching the fight, in my opinion, you win the fight. You completely win the fight. You're the champ. Uh, you bring the fight to him. He was going corner to corner uh, in uh, uh, during all the fight. It, you 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 give him a really tough 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 fight, a bloody fight also, almost from the beginning of the fight. And uh, the, um, I, I understand your frustration because uh, also for few of uh, for, for for the people, yes, uh, it wasn't the right decision on the scorecard. At all, you know. At yeah, I, I, I thought I should have won, but because because I didn't fight at my best, I, I feel like I don't have very much room to uh, to complain about it. So just yeah. take what it take it for what it is, what it is, and and uh, keep on moving. You know, I, I try not to dwell on things that I can't control. So yeah, um, yeah. it is what it is. But it's uh, for all the people who uh, uh, watch the video. As if you didn't have see that fight go back on youtube and uh, watch that fight it's uh, it's a tough tough fight uh, but the the story about around that fight is not over you have to explain about that picture look caleb explain to us explain to us <laughs> that picture <laughs> where we uh, um so we we had a way that we were the co-main event to uh to uh, Irislandi Lara and Jared Hurd. Yeah. And uh, afterwards, they had to keep one doctor at the, or they had to keep one ambulance at the arena, and they only had one ambulance to take both fighters to the hospital. So they were gonna have to take one guy, come back, and then take the other, and it would have been like a like a forty minute wait for the second guy to go. And the ambulance driver asked, you know, like, hey, are you are you guys going to? Uh, Uh, be okay, you guys are gonna fight or anything if we go in there. I'm like, nah, man, I'm just trying to go get stitched up and and get out of here. And so we rolled, we rolled the ambulance together. You know, that answered our questions that the that the nurse was asking us the whole time. And and uh, right before we uh, got to the hospital, I I figured I snap a picture and uh, uh, document uh, that because that's probably not too. That probably doesn't happen too often where the guys that fought each other ride in the same ambulance uh, together. So I know it. I know it's. Uh private but with uh, the girl did you did you uh, spoke uh, deeply together about the fight the, uh, in that ambulance no not really we we both just uh, were cordial and we both asked you know if, if each if, if uh, each other were okay and and uh, all right you know basically and uh, if anybody was injured but uh, just kept to myself and went on my phone and and talked to my uh, fans and talked to my girlfriend and texted my friends to tell them I was okay after the cuts and stuff. So it was like a 20 minute ride. So we didn't we didn't talk too much. It was uh, like your uh, Arturo Gatti uh, Mickey Ward moment together. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah, but so uh, so you don't have the decision, but uh, again, uh, I think you. You keep the, a lot of confidence about uh, yourself. Uh, again, much more experience, and you have. Uh, I think it's last year a, a big comeback fight at the Armory. Everything was set to be perf a perfect night for you uh, because you looked good uh, on the uh, on the beginning of the fight. Uh, this is this fight, Peter Quilling 
against you. Uh, so that must be uh, difficult to uh, to take uh, being uh, uh, being cut and badly cut. You, uh, the the doctor forced to stop the fight and. Uh, uh, again, as a just a, as a, a viewer, uh, I had the feeling that you were maybe in the best shape of your life. Uh, I am wrong. I, I felt great going into the fight. I did have an injury uh, a little bit prior, but I felt great going into the fight. I was really confident that I would uh, get the job done against Peter Quillen because we had sparred in the past, and I, and I had paid close attention to his career. So I've seen him fight a bunch of times. I, I thought that. Uh, I matched up really well with him, and uh, I thought that I would get the job done and and uh, get a victory in my hometown in front of my all my fans. And of course, in the second round, the headbutt, and yeah, what uh, what are you gonna do, man? I I never really been cut that bad my whole career in 30, 37 fights or whatever it was at the time, and uh, it's the first time I ever had a fight stop because of cuts or anything due to myself or my opponent. So. Just bad luck, and I've had a, a string of bad luck with a Achilles injury and that the cut, and now this uh, now this pandemic that's sweeping across the globe. So I've had a little bit of a bad string of luck when it comes to fights yeah. uh, in the last year and a half. How long to recover from the cut? Uh, I didn't spar for probably. Uh, I'd say probably at least two months. I didn't. I didn't do any sparring or anything, and and uh, maybe even three months. Um, but at the same time, I was recovering from the uh, torn Achilles, so I, I uh, wasn't even in the gym that much. I was just uh, uh, trying to rehab and and get my my ankle back to normal. So uh, as far as the cut goes, I didn't have to worry about it too much, just because I was focusing on my Achilles. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as a fan, you know, it was frustrating because I think it was a, a great matchup, a perfect matchup for you. And I just want to to know uh, your um, uh, what you think about the fight after quitting uh, against Angulo and the, and the the, the big uh, upset that Angulo uh, uh, did uh, that day. Uh, I'm pretty sure you. You, you could have done uh, the same. Yeah, I, I watched and, and I was frustrated when I when I was watching it Can because imagine. I knew that that's what I would have done as well. You know, I, I would have pressured him and uh, brought the fight to him. And, and uh, I think I'm a better fighter than Angulo, so I uh, I would have been more successful than he was. So I was I was uh, frustrated to say the least that it wasn't my opportunity to go out there and do that. And, I was I was actually cheering for I was cheering for Peter Quillen because uh, you know we we've been friendly in the past we spar together he's a good dude uh, I respect him mm -hmm. so I was cheering for him to get the win but uh, at the same time I was I was frustrated that I, it wasn't me in there fighting if that makes sense <laughs> yeah yeah uh, Caleb uh, let me ask you uh, something now about the, the present uh, you compete in a division very uh, very um, with a lot of competition, you know, the landscape of the super middleweight is, uh, is tough. It's tough. We, you, we have new names. Uh, we have uh, people with experience like you. Uh, how do you see the, the, the status of uh, the super middleweight now? Uh, it's, it's really competitive right yeah. now. You know, that there's uh, uh, the champions are, are Caleb Plant and Callum Smith and Benavidez. And uh, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Billy Joe Saunders. And uh, Canelo is, is fighting in super middleweight as well, I believe. So it's it's uh, it's a super competitive division. Uh, there's Right now, there's not like one clear-cut guy that's uh, the number one in the division. And uh, I'm just, I'm just uh, hoping to stay in the mix. I think Ring Magazine has me ranked like five or six in the division. And, and uh, same with ESPN is like eight or something like that. But I'm just trying to stay stay uh, relevant in the division and, and hopefully uh, when this this uh, coronavirus pandemic uh, passes uh, I'm, I'm going to get an IBF eliminator fight with the guy from Germany Stefan Hartel is what we were negotiating before all this took place so whoever wins that fight will fight plan for the IBF title uh, yeah. later on in the fall so 
Um, I'm hoping to, uh, that's the route I'm hoping to take once this all passes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, so I, I hope you, you can have the, that fight. But, uh, if we, uh, we put Canelo on the side, because we never know with Canelo, uh, he can go light, uh, heavy way to, uh, su super welterweight. We never know. But, um, for you, we don't have a number one in the division right now. Uh, I probably say David Benavidez. I, I think he's the number one guy, either Plant or Benavidez. I, at first, I thought it was Callum Smith, but I thought he lost his last fight against John Ryder. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's probably Smith, or, or excuse me, I think it's probably Plant or Benavidez, one of those two. Yeah. Uh, can, uh, uh, all the super middleweight from England, it's, it's also something uh, you are you're aware and uh, you are. You want to go back overseas to for a fight? You're open to the the idea. I would love to go back to England. That the, the fans were fantastic over there, and they, it was a great atmosphere. It's a it's a great boxing country, and uh, they really appreciate their fighters and appreciate their the sport of boxing. So I would love to go back over there. I have a lot of fans over there from the fight with the Gale. So um, okay. if I ever get the chance to go back there, I would go back in a heartbeat. Okay. You can go also in France, you know, we have also uh, uh, good fighters in France, but... <laughs> um, uh, Caleb, when all the, the COVID nightmare is over, hopefully one day, uh, what will be the, the best comeback possible for you? Uh, tell us about uh, how you imagine the best comeback possible in boxing. I think uh, the best route for me is to... to win the fight versus the German guy, Stefan Hartel, that would be for the IBF mandatory position and then fight Kayla Plant and win my title back, uh, hopefully in the late fall or winter of this next year. Okay. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we cross the finger for you, uh, Caleb. Uh, Caleb, uh, as a champ, Uh, it's always good to uh, to have your opinion of uh, the big debate in boxing. Uh, how do you see the the heavyweight um, the heavyweight drama, if I can say, between Wilder, Fury, and Joshua? Uh, for you, who is who is the best, and uh, who uh, who have the the best opportunity to to win? Uh, I think it's Tyson Fury, hands down, because. I thought that he won the first fight with Wilder. And going into the second fight, I picked Wilder to win. I thought Wilder was going to knock him out this time around just because he looked better in the two fights prior to the second fight with Fury. And Fury didn't look that great in the two fights prior to the second fight with Wilder. So I picked uh, Wilder to win the second fight with Fury. And, and boy, was I wrong. And uh, I think Fury's the best heavyweight in the world. And, and uh, hopefully we get the third fight uh, whenever this stuff ends yeah and uh last question about uh, the boxing world we d we debate all the time about the number one pound for pound for you who is the number one pound for pound right now uh i think it has to be canelo uh canelo has the best resume boxing i'm uh, not a, a two-way champion uh middleweight and, and uh, uh light heavyweight now And uh, he's got like a secondary belt in super middleweight. But uh, I think he's got the best resume. I think he's the biggest draw in boxing. So I think he has to be considered number one pound for pound. I think, I think the best fighter in boxing is Terrence Crawford. Uh, so it was, it either be my 1A or number two pound for pound. Uh, but uh, there's, there's probably like five guys that, that are cream of the crop. It's, you know, Canelo. Uh, Terrence Crawford, Lomachenko, and uh, Inoue. And now I think you got to put Tyson Fury up there too. Uh, uh, last question is, is more about it's more about the super middleweight division. It's more about you. And uh, because um, uh, I think you're, you, when fighting against you, uh, I think he was uh, hurt so bad and uh, that took a lot of him the two fight against uh, Caleb Truax. But uh, last year, Was it a surprise for you to see the girl retire just one fight, one fight after you? 
Uh, I was hoping he didn't because I wanted to get a I was I wanted to get a rubber match with him to uh, to settle the score. But uh, uh, you know, I, I honestly I wasn't too surprised after he retired when he lost to Eubank, uh, just because uh, the trajectory of his career was uh, you know he, he had been in some really tough fights with two with me and one with Badu Jack prior to me and the Eubank fight. Uh, so that's four really tough fights in a row. And and uh, uh, he, he there was talk about him retiring even going into the second fight with me. So I wasn't too surprised, but uh, I wish him the best. And, you know, he made a lot of money in his career. Hopefully he can continue to make some money and does well afterwards. And uh, last question. Uh, like, uh, you know, everybody now in the world are in quarantine. We are stuck at home. And you as a, an athlete, give us some tips, give us some advice to, uh, to stay in shape. Uh, in a period of time like this, so complicated. I uh, just gotta stay moving, man. I, I know uh, at where I'm at, we're still able to go outside and and you know go for a run outside or when the weather's nice and and uh, get a workout in in my You're backyard. Lucky. I got a big yard here, so uh, we we got some stuff to do out there. But I'm trying to do something every day. I, I've been running Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and. Uh, On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I've been doing yoga for a half hour and, and uh, doing push-ups, sit-ups, and squats and stuff like that. Just trying to uh, stay busy and uh, basically anything you do can do to stay active. Just uh, uh, try not to uh, sit in the house and eat junk food and drink beer or anything like that. You know. Okay. <laughs> okay. We we take a note. Maybe, maybe with a little bit of beer, but not too much. <laughs> okay. Or just a, a little uh, glass of wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Caleb Truax, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity for this interview. Uh, really, thank you again so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. We wish you the best when uh, boxing will be back. And uh, for the rest of the people, we see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks.